So it is sometimes difficult to find the value of current flowing through a given resistor using Norton's theorem, especially if the circuit contains more than one source. Now, if this is a challenge to you, the best thing to do is to combine Norton's theorem with superposition theorem to find the value of current flowing through the given resistor. Now, the reason why you want to combine superposition theorem with Norton's theorem is that superposition theorem allows you to consider one of the sources at a time. Now, when you do that, you reduce the complexity of the circuit and you are able to deal with the circuit. So in today's video, we are going to combine Norton's theorem and superposition theorem to find the value of current flowing through the two ohms resistor connected between E and F. So how do we solve this problem? Now, the first thing we need to do is to remove the resistor we want to find the current flowing through. That is the two ohms resistor connected between E and F. Now, since we want to combine Norton's theorem and superposition theorem, it means that we need to consider one of the sources acting alone while we deactivate the other. So at this point, we are going to consider the 7 volts to be acting alone while we deactivate the 10 volt source. So let 7 volts act alone. So let's redraw the circuit deactivating the 10 volt source. So we have this to be the 7 volt source. This is the 2 ohm resistor. We also have the 3 ohm resistor. We have this to be 5 ohms. And then this is the short circuit current. And we call that I n prime. And then this is 2 ohms. We have this to be 2 ohms. And then we are going to replace this, which is the voltage source, the 10 volt, with a short circuit. Now, the reason why we have I n prime is that we need to find the value of short circuit current that is flowing through this branch when the 7 volt is acting alone. Afterwards, we are going to find I n prime prime, which is also the short circuit current flowing through this same branch when the 10 volt is acting alone. So now let's find the value of current produced by the 7 volts so that we can find the value of current flowing through this branch which is I n prime. So to do so, first of all, let's find the total resistance for this circuit. Now you realize that when you go through this loop, you don't pass through any other circuit element except one resistor, which means that this resistor has been short circuited. Therefore, in finding the total resistance, we have RT prime equals these two resistors are connected in series because the same current will flow through them and their combination is in parallel with this 3 ohms resistor and all of that in series with the 2 ohms resistor. So we have RT prime to be equal to 2 plus 5 or parallel 3 plus 2. 2 plus 5 is 7, so we have 7 parallel 3 or plus 2. And then 7 parallel 3 is 2.1. So that becomes 2.1 plus 2 and that is equal to 4.1 ohms. Therefore, the value of RT prime is 4.1 ohms. Now, since we have the value of RT prime, then we can find the value of current produced by the 7 volt source. So let's call that I prime. So that is the current that is produced by the 7 volts. So I prime is equal to 7 divided by 4.1 and that is equal to 70 over 41 amperes. So this is the value of I prime. Now let's move on to find the value of I n prime. So I n prime is equal to, now these two resistors are in series. So their total is 7 ohms. And then we are going to distribute the current I prime between this 3 ohm resistor and the 7 ohm combination resistor. So the value of current that flows through these two resistors is the same current I n prime. 
So that is equal to using the current division rule. We have the value of this resistor, which is 3, divided by the sum of the two resistors. That is 3 plus the combination of these two, which is 7. So that becomes 3 plus 7 times the total value of current approaching the junction, which is I prime. So times 70 over 41. And that becomes 21 over 41 amperes. So this is the value of the short circuit current that flows through this branch when the 7 volt source is acting alone. Now notice the direction of I n prime. It is pointing downwards. At this point, let's deactivate the 7 volts and then consider the 10 volts acting alone. So let 10 volts act alone. So redrawing the circuit with the 7 volt source deactivated, we are going to represent that with a short circuit. We have the 2 ohms resistor. We have this to be the 3 ohms resistor. We have the 5 ohms resistor. We have the short circuit current through this branch. And then this is the 2 ohm resistor connected here. We also have another 2 ohm resistor. And then this is the 10 volt source. Notice the direction of current produced by the 10 volt source. Now let's call that current I prime prime. So the current is going to move in this direction. That is the clockwise direction. Now since we have a short circuit here, all the current produced by the 10 volts would like to flow through this path, neglecting all the resistors connected here. Therefore, the current I prime prime is the same value of current that flows through this branch and for that matter is equal to I n prime prime. Therefore, I prime prime is equal to I n prime prime and that is equal to 10 divided by 2 because that same current will flow through these two ohms resistor and that is equal to 5 amperes. Now notice the direction of this current, it is pointing upwards. Now let's find the algebraic sum of the short circuit current, I n prime and then I n prime prime. So we have I n, which is the total short circuit current flowing through this branch. And that is equal to I n prime plus I n prime prime. Now, since these two short circuit currents are moving opposite to each other, let's consider I n prime, which is flowing downwards to have a negative magnitude. So that will be negative 21 over 41. And let's consider the one that is I n prime prime, which is flowing upwards to have a positive magnitude. That is five. Now, when you add these two values, you have 184 divided by 41 amperes. Therefore, we have I n equals 4.4878 amperes. So this is the total value of short circuit current flowing through this branch. Now, since we have the value of I n, let's move on to find the value of R n, which is the Norton's resistance. So to find the Norton's resistance Rn, we need to redraw the circuit, deactivating all the sources. And because we have voltage sources, we are going to replace them with short circuit. So the 7 volt is replaced with a short circuit. We have this to be the 2 ohms resistor. We also have the 3 ohms resistor. We have this to be the 5 ohms resistor. And then this is the terminal AB. We also have this to be 2 ohms. And then we also have 2 ohms. And then we have a short circuit. And then we complete the circuit. So to find the value of Rn, these two resistors are connected in parallel. And their combination is in series with the 5 ohm resistor 
and also the 2 ohms resistor and all of that in parallel with this 2 ohms resistor therefore we have 2 parallel 3 or plus 5 plus 2 or parallel 2 now 2 parallel 3 is 1.2 and then 1.2 plus 7 is 8.2 so we have 8.2 parallel 2 and then 8.2 parallel 2 gives 1.6078 ohms so this is the value of rn now since we have the value of in and then rn we can find the value of current flowing through the two ohms resistor connected between the two terminals so let's draw the Norton's equivalent circuit so we have this to be the short circuit current in Notice that we had the greater magnitude of current flowing this way, that is upwards, which means that the total short circuit current, IN, will also flow in this direction, that is upwards. So we have this connected in parallel with the Norton's resistance, that is RN. And then we also have the load resistor, that is the 2 ohm resistor, connected in parallel with RN. So that is RL equals 2 ohms. So we had IN to be 4.4878 amperes. And then we have RN to be 1.6078. Now to find the value of current flowing through the 2 ohms resistor, we are going to use the current division rule. So the value of current flowing through the 2 ohms resistor is equal to the value of this resistor which is 1.6078 divided by the sum of the two resistors 1.6078 plus 2 times the value of the total current approaching the junction which is 4.4878 amperes Therefore, we have the current flowing through the 2 ohms resistor to be 1.99 amperes, which is equal to 2.0 amperes.